Libertarianism is a natural home for principled leftists because of its <laughs> impassioned opposition to the warfare state, to the national security state. It's just as natural a home for principled leftists because of its support for personal freedom. Now, some people on today's left, people like Alex Colbert of Counterpunch, have figured out what leftists in the Black Panther Party knew a generation ago. Gun laws don't just generate victimless crimes. They take away the tools people need to protect themselves against the state's own thugs. In a world in which SWAT teams can be deployed to break up home poker games, people need to be able to defend themselves from assaults by the state. But even leftists who don't realize yet how important self-defense against the state is can see how little support they get from mainstream politicians on issues like the drug war and why libertarianism is a natural home for people who are tired of feeling the heavy hand of the state used to suppress their personal freedom. Principled leftists already know that the drug war serves as an excuse to keep a shocking number of people, especially people with dark skin, behind bars. They know that it keeps drug prices high, and so makes crime more likely, and helps to fund the government's black ops around the world. And they know that it provides ongoing excuses for the cancerous expansion of a police state at home and of the government's military presence around the world. Libertarians can say, we're with you. We've been opposing the drug war with passion for decades. We can also remind principled leftists that we've been actively, vocally involved in the campaign for marriage equality. Now, I think we can all agree that the existence of a special, unique, legally mandated, state-created, state and unmodifiable marriage contract is a relic of the status society we all want to abandon. But until we can get the government out of the marriage business, we're proudly and loudly committed to ensuring that the law doesn't deny anybody the opportunity to marry on the basis of irrational prejudice. In the same way, Principled leftists should know that while conservative Republicans are still in favor of sodomy laws in Texas, and Democrats are often pretty quiet about supporting sexual freedom, libertarians are unequivocal. Principled leftists like Glenn Greenwald, I mean, thank God there are some, recognize that free speech matters, that it's worth protecting even when the speakers are saying things you don't like, when they're people you don't like, when they're saying what they say in ways you don't like with the support of funders you don't like. Modern liberals used to be free speech absolutists, no more. Principled leftists who want to support free expression without qualification know they won't find much in the way of support in the Democratic Party or at the Huffington Post, but they will among libertarians. And what's a better fit for principled leftists than libertarianism when it comes to police violence? As libertarians, we believe no one is entitled to special legal privileges and immunities. We know that it's not okay, it's not remotely okay, when people are gunned down or beaten savagely because they don't look the right way or because they have the nerve to be disrespectful or uncooperative to people with badges and guns and sirens at their disposal. Principled leftists, especially members of minority communities, know that establishment politicians won't stand with them against police violence, but they should realize that libertarians will. Unjust wars, the national security state, the drug war, and the sex police, and the censors, if you're really concerned about these issues, and of course a lot of principled leftists are, then you ought to see libertarianism as a natural fit. A lot of principled leftists don't seem to realize how much real libertarians care about war and violence. Perhaps they're only aware of the faux libertarians who think attacking people governed against their will by evil regimes is somehow an expression of libertarian principles. <laughs> who think bombing private property right here in the U.S. is morally appropriate if the target is a Muslim cultural center. Yes, <laughs> Leonard Peikoff, I'm talking to you. And some principal leftists may think that concern with personal freedom is somehow a luxury. But if so, they're obviously not remembering the legions of young people whose lives have been destroyed by the god-awful drug war. But I think the real barrier to appreciation by principal leftists of why libertarianism is an excellent fit for them is the preconception that libertarians are somehow unconcerned about poor people and are really just shills for big business. That's where we've got to take the offensive. We can and must insist confidently and proudly that there is nothing at all about libertarianism that commits libertarians to favoring corporate power or intrusive bosses or being unconcerned about destitution and economic insecurity. 
The key point is that it is ineffective, inefficient, dangerous, and unjust to try to use state aggression to address these problems. If we can help them see this point then on the economic front to principle leftists can embrace the freedom movement's agenda. People who say dismissively that libertarians are pot-smoking Republicans, who think that libertarians are stooges for the Chamber of Commerce and the National Association of Manufacturers, don't see the difference between being pro-business and being pro-market. Libertarians are enthusiastically pro-market, but that means they're constantly on the opposite side of the fence from those who are pro-business, at least if that means supporting privileges for business people as a class. If it means favoring tariffs and subsidies, patents and copyrights, the use of eminent domain to steal people's property and transfer it to developers, or the protection of favored economic interests with zoning laws and building codes and licensing requirements and all the rest of that crap. Corporate power results precisely <coughs> from the chummy relationship between business elites on the one hand and politicians on the other. If you care about pro-markets, if you care about markets, you care about ending that kind of relationship. The vast majority of politicians are ultimately on the side of the well-connected. Either they themselves are wealthy and well-connected, or they seek to become so using their political offices, or they're in the pockets of those who are. And history shows that they have consistently used efforts they claim are designed to promote the public interest to benefit their cronies. The power of the elite depends ultimately on privileges granted and maintained by the state. It is entirely compatible with, indeed, it is a powerful expression of a libertarian pro-market agenda to relentlessly oppose special privileges. Eliminating state-supported privileges takes us a long way toward dealing with the problem of poverty. Without various barriers, think of those posed by licensing requirements and zoning laws and building codes, it would be far easier for people to provide for themselves, to be more productive, and to pay less simply in order to live. Also important, though, would be the reversal of the effects of massive theft on the part of the state. Finally, the success of mutual aid networks in the past, until they were, in effect, put out of business by the state, suggests that where economic insecurity and deprivation persisted, despite the elimination of privilege and the rectification of problems created by past injustice, people could succeed in caring for each other without any involvement by the state if the state would simply get out of their way. Statist leftists often see state regulation as needed to protect consumers, but of course libertarians have no problem at all with consumers' use of the legal system. Not the system of government regulation, but the system of tort law to protect themselves when they're defrauded or when they're harmed directly or indirectly by pollution. As long as people have legally recognized rights to the integrity of their bodies and their property, they can do this without the involvement of the state. In fact, when in the 19th century people sued polluters in this way, courts step in to protect the polluters. <laughs> One function of government regulation today is to give polluters safe harbors, immunizing them against lawsuits by ordinary people, as long as the polluters have complied with government regulations, which are, of course, created with their connivance. So in this respect, too, the goals of principled leftists and libertarians don't have to be seen as different. Pick another hot-button issue. We can point, to th point out to thoughtful people on the left that the passage of Obamacare wasn't about solving the health care crisis, it was about mandating a massive giveaway to the insurance industry without doing a damn thing about the underlying factors that raise the costs of health care and limit access. From professional licensure to medical device patents to hospital accreditation to state subsidies for unhealthy foods to the FDA approval process and prescription requirements, a whole range of factors completely unaddressed. A libertarian approach to things that trouble principled leftists in the economic <coughs> realm is effective because it removes the props that keep the corporate elite powerful. It's less dangerous than alternate approaches because it doesn't vest more power in the state to infringe on our autonomy and control our lives. It's less inefficient because involving the state in trying to restrain corporate power, even if it were well-intentioned, which it almost certainly wouldn't be, would be problematic because the state can't, can't in principle, because of the lack of information available to it, manage the economy. And it avoids injustice because it is wrong of the state to claim authority over people without their consent, and we haven't consented. I mean, I haven't, and I'm betting no one here has either, to letting the state control our bodies and our possessions in order, supposedly, to improve our lives. <laughs> libertarians and principal leftists agree in general about war and personal freedom, except, of course, where libertarians are more principled and more radical. 
And in the economic realm, libertarians and principal leftists are on the same team when it comes to the basic goal of eliminating privilege, protecting consumers, and dealing with economic insecurity. The issue is a difference of means. Some leftists seem to think the state is somehow vital to dealing with poverty, corporate power, and risks to consumers. But libertarians know and can readily explain how concerns like these can be addressed without the state, and indeed can be addressed more effectively when state-secured privileges are eliminated. Let's take that message on the road. Let's tell principal leftists that if they want to find political allies who oppose aggressive warfare, reject the national security state, and the abominate the drug war, loathe special immunities for law enforcement agencies, and despise corporate privilege, they found them right here. This is where they belong, here where their deepest convictions about war and violence and personal freedom are enthusiastically shared, here where they can explore and implement peaceful, non-authoritarian means of achieving their goals. Let's tell the heirs of the new left, the Greens and the people at Food Not Bombs and the organizers of underground raves, that we share their commitment to participation and decentralization in grassroots organization, and that precisely because we do, we believe they have every reason to stand with us against statist solutions that keep people from managing their own lives. Let's tell people on the left that it's time to rebuild the alliance crafted by Murray Rothbard and Carl Hess, that there's no reason, no reason at all, to keep supporting the establishment politicians who promise everything and deliver nothing. Let's help them see that the state is the problem, not the solution. Let's let them see that we reject aggressive violence, that they can work with us to make a society rooted in peaceful, voluntary cooperation a reality. Let's tell them it's time to join the freedom movement. Let's tell them it's time to come home. Yeah. Oh, yeah.